shellfish are considered a gastronomic delight, but is this kaimoana good for us? With some containing heavy metals and lethal biotoxins, can we be confident what we buy is safe? And will a daily dose of mussels make these canny comics smarter? What's really in our shellfish? Shellfish are one of New Zealand's most abundant forms of kaimoana. We have around 3,600 native species. I want to find out if, like fish, they deserve their reputation for being a brain food and how they're farmed commercially. But first, what are the interesting looking bits we eat? It's about to get gooey. So with most animals that we eat, we, we tend to eat certain parts of them. It's not the case with shellfish, though. What exactly are we eating? Do I want to know? <laughs> most, most shellfish, we tend to eat the whole animal. Um, for example, if you take something like a mussel, we've got a foot mussel, which is used to open and close the shell, and then the uh, reproductive tissue. In this case, it's a, a female mussel. Those are eggs in there. You can see in here the gills, which the, the mussel uses for feeding and for breathing the water. Are there parts of it that are more tasty than other parts? Um, in the case of oysters and mussels, for example, the creamy, rich flavour you get is the reproductive uh, tissue. Mm. Mm. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, possibly a little TMI there, but while they may not be beautiful, lots of us love shellfish anyway. Last year, we imported nearly 2 million oysters and over 600 tonnes of other shellfish species. And we produce even more of our own. The green shell mussel industry alone harvests around 90,000 tonnes a year. Green shell mussels are a native New Zealand species, and with over 1,000 farms growing them around the country, they are easily our most prevalent form of aquaculture. I've come to meet Mark Holmes. How are you? Good, how are you? Brilliant. You have a good trip down? He's harvest manager at Wakatu Mussel Farm in Marlborough. Harvesting from a growing area covering 120 hectares in pristine Pelora Sound, Wakatu processed 9,000 tonnes of mussels last year. Right, we're at the technical bit. Tell us all about the mussel farming process. It starts way up in Kaitaia, and weed gets washed on a shore there and like fine grains of sand, the mussels are attached to the weed. We put a stocking over it to hold the weed on the rope, and the end product is you see something These like this. Babies. Yeah. These are around three, four months old, and you'll probably find there's three, four, five thousand of those mussels to the meter. Green shell mussels take around three years to grow full size and are around nine centimeters long by the time they're harvested. They're also ranked as one of the world's top eco-friendly seafoods, so we can eat farmed mussels with a clean, green conscience. But are they any good for us? Shellfish is a good source of complete protein. That means that it provides all the essential amino acids that our body requires but can't make. Shellfish are lower in fat than other complete protein sources like chicken and beef, so provide this nutritional upside without the fattening downside of high kilojoules. I've heard shellfish contain high levels of cholesterol, so are they bad for my heart? Well, shellfish are high in cholesterol, but recent studies show only a weak link between dietary and blood cholesterol. So if you don't have high cholesterol already, shellfish shouldn't do your heart any harm. And some varieties even contain high levels of a nutrient that can help protect it. Omega-3s are essential fatty acids. That means we need to get it from our diet. Omega-3 occur in almost every cell in the body and it affects almost every function in the body. Omega-3's best known benefit is reducing the risk of heart disease. It decreases triglyceride levels, which are the um, predominant fat in our body. It improves irregular heart rhythm, which is the main cause of heart attacks and it improves blood flow, similar to what aspirin does. Research also suggests omega-3 is important to brain function. We have some good scientific evidence for its beneficial effect on mood and depression, 
We also have evidence in children that omega-3s improve reading and spelling and memory. And on the other side of the spectrum, it improves the decline associated with old age in memory. Salmon is the best source of omega-3, but oysters and mussels are also up there. Around three a day will provide enough to reduce the risk of heart disease. As well as being rich in omega-3, mussels and oysters are the best common dietary sources of iodine. Iodine is an essential nutrient that we need on a daily basis so that we can produce enough thyroid hormones. New Zealand soil has very low levels of iodine, which means the plant and animal foods we grow contain very little. In fact, a 2003 study estimated our diets provide less than half the amount we need. So, should we be concerned? Well, research on children suggests even mild iodine deficiency could cause brain fog. If you take children who are mildly iodine deficient, give them extra iodine and look at how their brain is working, the children who have improved iodine status actually improved their ability to solve problems. In 2009, it became mandatory to add iodine to all non-organic bread you need to eat more than eight slices a day to get the amount you need. Mussels and oysters are a far better source. Around five green shell mussels or seven oysters will meet your daily requirement and contain the same amount as 10 kilos of chicken. So with both high iodine and omega-3 content, mussels should be a fantastic brain food. To put this to the test, I'm hanging out with some of the quickest wits on TV. These guys have to think on their feet to conjure up winning punchlines. But will bumping up the iodine and omega-3 in their diets increase their mental dexterity yet further? Vaughan, yep. go! To find out how fast their cogs are turning, we're measuring their powers of memory with a timed pair matching game. We're at three minutes. God, it feels like ten. So does anyone feel like coffee? Yeah. yeah. Should we go to my place? I could bake something. We've got time. Yeah. Four minutes and ten seconds. And a word recall test. Money, piano, pencil. Chips, kite. I think I did pencil and blank. And to test their problem solving skills, we're timing how quickly they can arrange the pattern on these tiles. Really? Food in our what? To be honest, it's not looking very good. <laughs> Our comics will eat 150 grams of mussels a day for the next six weeks. Then we'll retest to find out if the extra iodine and omega-3s have boosted their brain power. Coming up, shellfish may be nutritious, but they can also kill. So can I be sure what I'm buying is safe? And how should I store and cook shellfish to avoid getting sick? I've learned shellfish are a low-fat source of complete protein and mussels and oysters are packed with brain-boosting omega-3 fats and iodine. But shellfish can also make you very sick indeed. In fact, they can kill you. In 1987, three people died and 105 were hospitalised after eating mussels in Canada. And six years later, 180 people suffered neurotoxic shellfish poisoning here in New Zealand. So what is it that makes shellfish a potentially lethal meal? Well, most of our favourites are bivalve mollusks and they aren't particularly fussy eaters. A green shell mussel, for example, will filter around half a bathtub of water through its gills a day to get enough phytoplankton to feed on. Unfortunately, some of these tiny plants may contain potentially killer poisons which can accumulate in the shellfish. A particularly nasty one is amnesic shellfish poisoning, which damages brain cells. There have occasionally been deaths from this, but often we see permanent short-term memory loss. Paralytic shellfish poisoning was the most commonly diagnosed form of biotoxin poisoning last year, and there were only four reported cases. But although rare in New Zealand, it's often fatal, killing around 10% of its victims globally. Symptoms of toxic shellfish poisoning vary, but can include vomiting and diarrhoea, tingling or burning around the lips and mouth, slurred speech and shortness of breath. And as biotoxins remain intact even after thorough cooking, if you buy contaminated shellfish, they are likely to poison you. 
Brian Rowan is MAF's National Seafood Specialist. I hope he's going to tell me not to worry. We can't have unsafe levels of biotoxin in our shellfish. We have a comprehensive program that monitors the growing areas weekly. We take a sample of shellfish to see there's no marine biotoxin in them. We also take a seawater sample to see none of the, the toxic algae are floating around in the growing water. So what if you do find biotoxins? We shut the areas down. In fact, if testing reveals toxic algae, operators typically halt harvesting well before it hits unsafe levels. We have had no illnesses from marine biotoxins since 1993. It's as safe as we can get it to the world best practice. But there's growing evidence climate change is increasing the number of toxic algal blooms globally. So how safe is the $8 million worth of shellfish we import annually? According to MAF, a new system introduced this year has reduced safety sampling at our borders, but should decrease the risk of contaminated imports. You can't sample safety into shellfish. You need to make sure that the, where they come from is safe. We require the same program in place in the country that sends shellfish to New Zealand as we have in New Zealand, or very equivalent. We are told auditing by US, EU and New Zealand authorities should ensure this. One time there was a big high tide, so when it went out, there were all these hundreds of scallops stranded on the beach, and people were going down with kerosene tins and filling them up with scallops that they'd never collected before like that. Shellfish gathering is still popular. Each year it's estimated we gather up to 7 million pippi, 2 million scallops and 2 million mussels. But you have to be careful where and when you gather them. Before you go, check the Food Smart website for marine biotoxin alerts in the area. And once you get to the beach, look out for warning signs. This should safeguard against biotoxins, but that's not all shellfish may contain which can make you sick. The growing waters where we find shellfish can be contaminated by farm runoff and from human habitation and those uh, waters will contain bacteria and viruses. And just as filter-feeding shellfish can accumulate biotoxins, they can also accumulate these nasty bugs. The sort of bacteria we could see in shellfish are Salmonella and Escherichia coli. These both cause food poisoning, and sometimes that can be quite severe. We can also see viruses, such as norovirus, which is extremely contagious, about a 93% hit rate if you become exposed to it and they will all cause vomiting and diarrhoea. And like biotoxins, some viruses survive high temperatures, so cooking provides no protection. To minimise the risk of food poisoning, avoid gathering shellfish from areas close to cattle, drains and houses and recreational boats which could discharge sewage. Heavy rain will also wash sewage and farm runoff downstream, so after a storm, wait several days before gathering. To safeguard against contamination, commercial shellfish operations must be a safe distance from pollution sources, regularly test for bacteria and stop harvesting after heavy rain. But even if shellfish have safe levels of bacteria when they leave the water, they may not have by the time you eat them. Bacteria multiply very rapidly and for about every four to five degrees rise in temperature, they double their rate of division. So it's essential to keep the shellfish cool. I would suggest two to three degrees centigrade, keep the fridge turned right down, and consume them within a day or so of purchase. Cooking shellfish at 80 degrees for at least three minutes will kill off any bacteria. And if you're cooking mussels or scallops, give the shells a tap. If they close, they're good. If they don't, they're dead. So chuck them in the bin, not the pot. Coming up, has a daily serve of mussels increased our comic's powers of memory? And she go, are you going to ring the baby? And I say, oh yeah, I knew there was something else. And I'll find out which shellfish may expose us to heavy metals. I've found out farmed shellfish are likely to be safe as long as I store and cook them correctly. And there's yet more good news about them nutritionally. According to the Ministry of Health, many of us aren't getting nearly enough iron in our diets, but do we know a good source of iron when we see one? 
So of the foods on this plate, which do you think has the most amount of iron? The choices are spinach, oysters, mussels, lamb or beef. You will think the steak, the steak eh? Would. The steak. Oh, probably one of these horrible things. Mussels? I'd go for the red meat. I'd say the spinach. I'm thinking possibly the leafy green vegetable. That Popeye, he's got a lot to answer for because it's not the spinach. This? Really? Well, you were on the right track, buddy, because shellfish is where it's at. The actual order is mussels, then oysters, then the beef, then the lamb, and in the last place, our spinach. Are you surprised? Ah, yeah. Oh, I was written. <laughs> wow. So, quite a surprise to many people to find out that mussels contain the most amount of iron by far. In actual fact, a man would have to eat this many mussels to get his recommended daily intake of iron compared with these amounts of all these other foods. And a woman aged between 25 and 51 would have to eat twice as much. And that is a mountain of spinach. While they may not be as rich in iron as mussels, oysters are a great source of zinc. As well as being crucial for our immune system, we need zinc to make testosterone, one of several hormones which control sex drive. Just five oysters a day will provide an adult with enough zinc. So is this why they're a renowned aphrodisiac? Well, probably not. Eating oysters would only raise testosterone levels in men low in zinc, and the effect on libido would not be instant. In fact, a recent study suggests mussels may be more likely to be an aphrodisiac. It found mussels are high in two amino acids, which, according to other research, trigger the release of higher levels of sex hormones. But as heating reduces these amino acids, you have to eat mussels raw to feel l'amour. Maybe you guys should have ordered the oysters. Zinc and iron have definite nutritional benefits, but shellfish may contain other harmful metals which accumulate in our bodies when we eat them. When a shellfish takes in mercury, it can take it in two ways. The first is in its food, which it filters out of the water, or in small particles of silt that mercury might be stuck to in the water. And because New Zealand is a volcanic country, there's more mercury in our environment than elsewhere. Mercury is very toxic indeed. It interferes with the development of the nervous system, particularly the central nervous system. Which means mercury is particularly bad for young and unborn children whose brains are developing very quickly. So should we worry about levels in shellfish? If you want to compare the levels of mercury, the long-lived fin fish have much higher levels of mercury than the shellfish. In fact, we couldn't find any shellfish which tested higher than 0.1 milligrams of mercury per kilo. So there's no need to limit your intake for this reason. But there's another damaging heavy metal which certain shellfish accumulate in even larger amounts. Cadmium is highly toxic. It can cause cancer. So a long, long-term dose of cadmium can lead to to cancer. Cadmium, like mercury, is present in our soil in relatively large amounts, mostly due to volcanic activity, but we add even more through fertilizer use. It's washed into rivers and eventually ends up in silt on the ocean floor, which shellfish filter out of the water. Oysters are more prone to accumulating cadmium than other species of shellfish or anything, actually, because they tend to live right down in the bottom of the sea in the silts. Pacific or rock oysters are usually grown on lines or in trays, so contain far less than those dredged from the ocean floor. But MAF says regardless of how much cadmium oysters contain, it presents little danger to our health. The form which cadmium takes in oysters makes it difficult for the human body to absorb. The New Zealand public can be confident that dredged and farmed oysters present no threat to human health arising from cadmium. Earlier, we packed off four quick wits to eat mussels every day for six weeks. So, do they think the daily dose of omega-3 and iodine has boosted their powers of memory? So the missus, we go out shopping, and I should say yes, and we jump in the car, and she go, are you going to bring the baby? And I say, oh yeah, I knew there was something else. But so not a good sign. You had your but I had muscles. my muscles, yeah. so... Um, if you hadn't had the muscles, <laughs> you might have forgotten the missus as well. <laughs> that's right, that's so. true. Could this be a human experiment to forget? Are you regretting your decision to wear pencil cases on your feet? <laughs>
Well, each comic repeated the memory and problem-solving tests we set them at the beginning of the experiment. OK, now you are frightening me with your brilliance. Yes. yes! OK, four minutes, 41 seconds. <laughs> and while Jesse and Vaughan both scored slightly worse than they did six weeks earlier... Tree, dog, outfit, suit. Are any of these words close? <laughs> Ben's overall performance improved by more than 42%. I did it. Last time I gave up. And Michelle's by a whopping 68%. Yes. Yay! Woo. So, as scientific research into omega-3 suggests, muscles, which are also packed with iodine, could be a great yeah. brain food. Oh, my God. Muscles are awesome. <laughs> but one last word of warning. Why should you never marry a bivalve mollusk? Don't know. Because <laughs> he'll be really shellfish. Oh. Shellfish? Yeah, OK. Hey, we'll uh, give you a call about seven days, eh? Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, you're really good on the, on the news. Oh, thanks. Thanks. But, mm. They never um, did call me. Do you, you want my number? So, what have I learned? Well, shellfish can contain biotoxins, bacteria and viruses, so I'll be careful if I collect them myself. But monitoring should mean farmed shellfish are safe to eat. I'll make sure I don't keep shellfish longer than 48 hours and I'll cook them thoroughly before eating. And as mussels and oysters are packed full of iron, omega-3s and iodine, I'll be serving them up more often. Mm.